Hello everyone, welcome to 17th episode of Fundamentals of Research in Medicine with Professor Fikri Abuzidan. Prof, welcome. Uh, today uh, we will talk about submitting a manuscript to a journal. So what would you like to say to our students? Yeah, uh, Arif, now we are almost uh, written the paper, all right? And uh, we have chosen which journal. And uh, after discussion with the group, looking into different factors, we decided we will go for such a journal. And there are things to do actually uh, uh, before you start formatting the paper, then you have to format the paper. And there are things during the submission process and there are actually some things after submission that you may need to correct. So let's go through these stages one by one. Before you start formatting, please read the instructions very well. Because, uh, and especially the scope of the journal, maybe your articles do not fit into the journal. Maybe you have written a review and the journal accepts only systematic reviews. Maybe jur the journal uh, does not publish case reports. Then. Also, the instructions will tell you exactly how many words uh, should you write, how many words in the abstract, how, how many, many references, have have, yeah. Yeah, how many figures and tables. After you read the instructions and you're convinced this is the proper journal, I, I really think I'm going to go for it, then the next thing is to start formatting. And in this way, what I do, I print the instructions. Once you print the instructions, you go through them as if you are reading a, an article. Everything you go, you really try to know how to organize them, the sequence, what font to use, how to meet the heading and subheadings, and then what for, uh, the, the wordings. And then after that, what quality of images you need. Some journals exactly tell you how much resolution you need, how to arrange the tables, where to put the tables. Yes. And then after you understand what's going on, you start to prepare yourself for the process of really writing the, the paper in its final version to be submitted. Yeah. Now, during this process, you may pick new things. Like, for example, there should be a consent form. All the authors should sign that they agree yeah. on this paper. Some journals insist that they need the signature manually. So you have to collect this before submission. Yes. Some of them actually ask for, you know, online. You know, online. They send emails and you need to click and go and, you know, uh, accept, yeah. That's right. But some journals insist, yeah. like all uh, authors should sign. sign. Yeah. Some journals accept the corresponding author, takes the responsibility Absolutely. of that. Some journals will, once you submit, they send an electronic form for everyone. So yes. the principle that people who are authors should agree that this is, they agree to be accountable to what is written as we yes. had discussed before. Yes. So once you st decide everything is fine, you prepare your paper, you prepare your references, you uh, prepare your images, whether they are inside or outside, there are specific things, like example, for the uh, title page, whether this should be anonymous, should be separate or together, yes. whether you have to put the emails of all authors or it's enough for the corresponding author. Yeah. How do you put the names? For example, some people don't put names without initial, some people with the middle initial and so on. Yeah. So simple advice, go and read what they mention and follow exactly what they tell you. For example, the, the, one of the things I found in the preparation which is, is not good is that they make it single line, although mm -hmm. it should be double line. Because this may let them, read, they will send back the paper to you and then you delay. Yeah. You have to do it, but then you delay the process of to yes. and from. Yeah. Once the paper is ready, then you come to the submission process. The submission process usually, uh, sometimes you get surprised that there are things in, within the submission process that is not, was not clearly written in the instruction. Yes. So then Actually, you have this to- this is happening a lot. My yeah. observation, which is I'm not experienced as you, but uh, the many journals actually that have some instruction for others is nothing, you know, it's not fit with the, what is written in the online sometimes. Yeah, you it should follow. It's very confusing. Actually. Yeah, I should follow what's on the online. And the, the, the other uh, important thing, Arif, is that 
during the submitting, submitting process in a journal, you get experience with that. So I know now from experience, this journal will, will, JPJ will be good. The other journal, it's need another type of, of, of figuring. Does it accept JPJ? Some journals, uh, certain files, they don't accept. Yeah. And so you have to really go through the website and know exactly what do they want. Now, before you go to the website, you need to register. And uh, you have to have a specific password and please keep this password confidential. Don't share it with others. So, uh, and then try to keep your name as it is. And I advise people now to use the ORCID if yeah. they become researchers, because even if your name is slightly changed, it will be recognized that you are this person. Yes. So it's called like an identifier. It's like an ID card, yeah. but for a researcher. Now, my advice to people that they prepare everything and then submit once. Yeah. And why is that? Because you learn a few things in the submission problems and sometimes there are technical issues that you have to address and try to finish the job till it is actually submitted. I had one experience that one day we were doing a submission which was lengthy to five, five hours. And then once I submit, submit, the journal said, we're sorry, the website has changed. So I oh, spent sure. another five hours. <laughs> but the principal said, I like to submit at the same time. It took me 10 hours to submit, maybe or nine hours at least, because it was quicker. Because then you, you know what are the tricks or everything and so on. So it's more efficient, although it looks longer, but it's more efficient. The other risk of not submitting is some people tend to forget yeah. about the article. They, so better to submit it and the principle actually in submission, keep your paper on the disk of the editor. <laughs> not so, on your desk. Not on your desk. So if it's not submitted, it's if, as if you did not send it. So that's my, my second advice. Now, once you submit, usually journals will send to you a PDF. <clears throat> and please read the PDF, read it, because sometimes you get surprised, the lines will move yeah. uh, technically. Yeah. So if you write a cover line, uh, letter, the 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 uh, the correction for in the uh, as we see in the revision in such page it will be a different page so check that the sequence of the PDF that was generated is exactly similar to your original especially if you have revisions yeah. telling exactly what are the revisions so once you read it you really uh, submit it and it goes to the to the journal. A very cautious point, if you are open uh, journal, uh, access journal, you may need to be, pay money. So be sure that you have the money yeah. and you, because you click that this is your responsibility for payment and it's a legal process. They will really ask you later on about the payment yeah. and otherwise you will be maybe blacklisted or whatever. Yeah. That. Now, after submission, it takes in good journals three, four days, they will look to the two things, to the technicality. Yeah. Does it follow? their level and instructions and they may come back to you yeah. like for example in uh, case control uh, uh, case uh, case reports they may ask you to upload the the uh, the consent of the patient yeah. or the the ethical approval and uh, they may ask you to put a specific area in another thing or make the acknowledgement after uh, the 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 uh, abstract or move it so each journal has uh, some journals want the tables within the text some of them yeah. want them separate some want them at the end of the text some want the figures inside some want them outside so they may come back to you because the submission should fit Their, you know, the, the, uh, yeah. the the uh, the the instructions now what happens is that you can even follow what happened in your system the paper usually goes to an editor and then the editor decides he may reject it directly and send it back to you, or he may send it for review. Yeah. Now, one of the problems sometimes is the review gets delayed. Yeah. So what would you do? This is during the submit. Still, you didn't get an answer. I advise people only to write to the editor or assist, uh, assistant editor not less than three months because you so know you're, you're recommending three months we should wait and wait then yeah, you yeah can because you, again. Yeah. usually most of the journals give six weeks but we know that uh, if you try to interrupt that some they can remind the reviewer but now the systems of most of the uh, electronic systems automatically remind yeah. you as a reviewer so most probably he will be either busy or on vacation 
So if you try to get another reviewer, you may be delayed more. Yeah. So I, I would usually not write to the editor unless it's three months and four. Yeah. More. And some journals are have a shorter time of reply, some have a longer time of reply. And from experience, you will know which, uh, which journal actually to, to be quicker than the other. Okay, Prof, thank you very much uh, about the, the uh, hints uh, to submit a manuscript to a journal. Uh, we will uh, have an, uh, one episode actually after this uh, about answering the uh, reviewers' comments. So I'm looking forward to this actually. So thank you very much for today's episode. Thank you very much, Arif.